The account of David and Goliath is one of the most famous stories in the Bible and has become a byword for a contest between the little guy and the seemingly invincible foe. This battle, described in 1 Samuel 17 in the Old Testament, is an object lesson in faith. While King Saul and his army were demoralized and intimidated, David trusted God who gave him the skill to bring down Goliath with a well-aimed stone. And then he beheaded Goliath with his own sword. This battle is also mentioned in the Quran in Surah 2. However, it is the briefest possible mention with the words, David killed Goliath, and no further elaboration. This is puzzling. How would the Quran's audience have known who David or Goliath were, as no information about them is given? Unless they did in fact already know the story so well that it would have been superfluous to repeat it. David gets another brief mention in Surah 684 where he appears in a list of messengers sent by God. Next in Surah 21, the Quran's audience are told to remember David and Solomon and their judgment regarding a field into which some sheep had wandered. This is doubly curious. Firstly, there is no similar story in the Bible, so there is nowhere else to look for explanation about the details of this case. But secondly, it does seem odd that the two greatest kings of Israel would be remembered for sorting out some wandering sheep. I guess it must have been a very complex problem. The same passage speaks of the hills and the birds celebrating God's praises with David. And this is probably talking about the Psalms, where that kind of imagery is sometimes used. However, it then says God taught David how to make coats of chain mail. This is curious, as David lived in the early Iron Age, and there is no historical record of chain mail until some 500 years later. Nevertheless, the Quran is quite insistent that David made chain mail as this is repeated in Surah 34, and furthermore that God made the iron soft for him, which could be a reference to the plasticity of iron at high temperatures. Again, the Bible says nothing about David's iron working skills, and there is nothing in the historical record to suggest it. The last reference to David is in Surah 38, and is again about a dispute over sheep, with a story largely taken from the Bible. In 2 Samuel 12, following David's sin with Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan told David a story about a poor man with one ewe lamb, which was taken by a rich man with many sheep. When David angrily condemned the greedy man, Nathan responded, You are the man. The story was a pointed allegory, and David understood he was in the wrong. However, in the Quran, the allegory is presented as an actual case where David had to make a judgment about the men and their sheep. The two litigants climbed over the wall to bring their case, which does seem like storyteller's license. And that is all the Quran has to say about David. It confirms he was a messenger and says he was given the Psalms, but it does not tell you what he said. Muslims generally do not read the Psalms. The Bible, on the other hand, contains the Psalms, about half of which are attributed to David. The Psalms continue to be read in Christian churches today as an encouragement to worship. One of the favourites is Psalm 19, which begins, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they reveal knowledge. And it goes on to compare God's revelation in creation with his revelation in the law. And it ends on a personal note, with the last verse saying, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. But probably the most well known is Psalm 23, the shepherd psalm. It begins, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This psalm has been a comfort to many in times of grief and crisis. David did not worship a remote and indifferent God, but rather one who is like a shepherd. David had himself tended sheep as a boy, before his confrontation with Goliath and his rise to power and fame. Leading a bunch of sheep might not look as impressive as leading a conquering army, and some might say it's beneath God's dignity. But for David, the Lord was his shepherd, whose staff gave him comfort in the valley of the shadow of death. This theme about shepherds and sheep turns up a lot in the Bible. A prophet's role is not to sort out disputes about the owners of sheep, but to lead and care for the sheep. 
This theme is continued in the teachings of Jesus. He said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And he said a lot more about this in John 10. But while David called the Lord his shepherd, Jesus claimed to be that shepherd. So here are two accounts of David. One describes a man whose chief acts were that he sorted out disputes about sheep and made armaments from iron. The other, written some 1500 years earlier, is of a man who called the Lord his shepherd and whose psalms look forward to a greater shepherd in the future. Think about it. 